This is the new Aura Funky Cat, and it's a little bit like a Chinese salamander. You see, you think a salamander's about that big, but Chinese salamanders can grow to about six foot. Similar thing with this Chinese electric car. You look at it and think, that's gonna be the same size as a Mini. But actually it's not, it's much bigger. It's about the same size as a Volkswagen ID3. Now in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about it and talk you around the exterior, show you the inside, try out some of its tech, see how practical it is, take it for a drive, and of course, I'm gonna launch it because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, Car Wow. Let's start off by talking about the design of the Aura Funky Cat. So it's sort of like being inspired by some other cars. The rear kind of reminds me of a Fiat 500. I do like it though. Moving down the side, if you look at the profile, this kind of area, sort of a bit like the original Nissan Leaf, but better looking. In terms of wheel sizes, they start at 18 inches and stop at 18 inches because there is only one trim level on this car. The only things you can really change are the paint and you can get this two-tone effect, which I quite like, which reminds me of what you can do with the Mini. And at the front, it also reminds me of the Mini with the headlights, although it's also slightly beetly and maybe even a touch Porsche 911. I like this, the little ridges in the bonnet. I think this is quite a cute, good looking car, this. What do you think? Let me know by voting in the pinned comment. As for the price, well, the Aura Funky Cat starts from just under £32,000. And if you're thinking about buying a new car and you want to check out all the latest offers and compare cars, just simply Google help me car wow. And my team and I'll help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. Here on the inside, the Aura Funky Cat is very funky. I like the design of the dash and the fact that, as well as just a normal grey interior, you can get two two-tone choices. There's a red and cream, but also this lovely green and cream. I like the fact that the dash is squidgy and it's got leatherette on it. Squidgy materials here as well, and like this quilted material. It's all very nice makes a Volkswagen ID3 feel a bit cheap and nasty, to tell you the truth. Also, it makes the infotainment system in the ID3 seem very, very frustrating and annoying because this one is easier to use. You can just flip through things quite easily. It's reasonably responsive, not the quickest, but it's okay. One thing that is a bit of a pain is the fact that most of your climate controls have to be operated through this. There is a shortcut button down here for the actual air conditioning, so you can just turn it on quickly and do your front and rear screens as well, but that's it. Actually, looking down here, I wonder where they got the inspiration for these toggle switches. Mini. Now you've got this separate digital driver's display. It's a bit of a shame it doesn't have the sat nav in there, but other than that, you do get quite a bit of information. You can just toggle through it like that. One thing that is a bit annoying is that from launch, there's no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, but it will be updated. So if you buy one of these cars now, then you'll get an over the air update and it'll be able to work with your phone, whether it's Apple or Android. As for the rest of the layout, well, you get some scratchier plastics lower down, but that's absolutely fine at this price point. And in terms of practicality, there is a little storage area under here got an armrest which could do with being able to extend it oh well there's some storage there for your phone with wireless charging another storage tray there you got your drive mode selector dial here i like that and then this flat area for storing other bits and pieces and you can put your key there like if it's not recognizing that you're in the car because basically you have the key in your pocket you jump in the car will automatically open for you put your foot on the brake put it into drive and it'll go. There's no turning it on or off. It just figures that you're in the car. Now, if you don't want to carry around this key, because it is quite chunky, which is good in a way, it feels expensive, you'll be able to use an app on your phone, which allow you to do things like check that you haven't accidentally left your child in the car. Anyhow, the driving position. So you can alter the steering wheel for reach and height. The seats are electric as standard. In fact, this car is so fully loaded. There's no options on it. It basically comes as is with lots and lots of kit. Last thing to show you is this, look. Door bins are a decent enough size. And as testament to the quality of the vehicle, look how damped the glove box is. Look, slow. There is only one thing letting this car down now. And it's these first edition badges that have just been stuck on. I think they're for the UK market. Go, oh look, first edition, lots of kit. Wow, it's horrible. There's no need for that at all. Here in the back of the Aura Funky Cat, it feels just as posh as in the front. So you've got the lovely, quilted textured seats you've got quiltiness there door tops aren't squidgy they're like in the front but i can't really complain on similar cars in this category you don't even have them soft touch in the front knee room it's good headroom it's good foot space is good what's not so good is that the seat base is quite low to the floor so you don't have much under thigh support and while the middle seat 
and the fact that the floor is almost completely flat do mean it's okay if you're sat in the middle. This cos body isn't that wide, so if you have three adults in the back, it's a little bit of a squeeze. Bigger problem is fitting a child seat. So the covers for the ICX anchor points are real faff. When you're trying to put the seat in there, this just gets in the way. And the design of the seat back means it's very hard to actually get the ISFIX anchor points in there because this seems to extend quite away. And if the legs aren't long enough on the base of the seat, it's really tough. However, once you've fitted the seat in there, it's not a problem because there's lots of space here that even with the bulky rear facing seats, you don't have to move the front passenger seat forward at all. That's a good thing. What's also a good thing is you get an armrest and it has some cup holders there that you, you do end up putting your arm in it, but some cars don't even have the cup holders. Some cars don't even have the armrest. So I'm not complaining about that. Rear door bins, let's check those out. Are they big enough? Please be big enough. They are big enough. That is a good thing. Then you've got some pockets here as well. Overall, pretty decent in the back. Now let's move on to the weak point on the Funky Cat, and that's the size of its boot. In terms of litres, 228 litres. A mini electric has a very small boot. That's 211 litres. So actually, very similar size. Yet this car, in terms of the exterior dimensions, is more like the Volkswagen ID3. And that car's boot is almost 70% bigger than this car's. I mean, look. It's tiny. There's also a bit of a lip to lift things over. So if you're carrying stuff heavy like that, you're gonna either scratch your trim or do your back in. And it doesn't help the fact that, look, you have to carry your charging cables in the boot as well. Now, if you need to carry longer items, you can fold down the rear seats, obviously, like in every other hatchback, but there is this ridge here. So it just makes it a bit harder to slide things ah, to the front. Ah. But, you know, it's okay, because surely this being electric, there's a front boot as well. So let's check that out. Ah. Oh, look, no storage actually. Hmm. It's a bit rubbish, isn't it? That brings me on to five or nine things about the Aura Funky Cat. There's only one USB charging port in the back, which just quite frankly isn't enough these days. And look, you'll notice, old fashioned USB. So too are the ones in the front. This is supposed to be a brand new modern car. Why is it using old USBs? The location of the cup holders down here isn't ideal because if you've gone for a smaller cup of coffee because you don't want too much caffeine in your system, this gets in the way and you can't quite reach it. Look over there, so you're driving and can't quite reach it. You end up doing this, oh, piss. I don't know why there is no light for the vanity mirror. How are you supposed to check yourself out in the dark? Wouldn't you be nice? That's just gonna make you look like a ghoul. The low cover may be tiny, but it's blooming hard to remove Come on. Oh, I'm gonna have to do an uppercut. There we go, got it out. Also, there's nowhere to store it underneath there. You know what that means? Oh. <laughs> you didn't follow that very well, Lewis, at all. But anyway, swipe out. The location of the driving mode select button is just in the worst possible position. Well, not actually the worst. It could be worse if it was in the boot, but not by much. Look, it's out of your line of sight. Look, I can't see, I'm gonna to have to go like that to press it. However, it's not all bad. Here's five cool things about this car. Because when you do press a sport button, you get a little jingle to tell you in sport mode. It sounds really cool. Here we go. It's like a gun going off. Then there's other sounds for the other modes. That's eco, that's auto. I'll go through them again so you can hear them properly without me talking over them. There's some other cool features on this car as well, which um, really make you feel that it's got a bit of a personality. For instance, when you open and close it, you get a little light dance in the front lights and at the rear lights. And when you get in, a fish swims across the screen to the other screen. Oh, I don't know. You see this little device here on the windscreen pillar? Well, that has face recognition technology in it, so you can tell if you're starting to fall asleep behind the wheel and the car will warn you, advise you to take a break. However, it can do more than that. It can actually be used to set your personal settings. So when you get in the car, it recognizes who you are and will make sure that everything is set up for you. Then if someone else gets in and they have different settings, it will do it for them as well. Clever. 360 degree view cameras come as standard and the screen resolution is brilliant as well. You can do that thing like that where you can look around your car, tire view so you don't feel your tires, at a top down view to get really close to things when you're reversing, normal reversing camera view. And then there's this transparent chassis which works a little bit like the systems you get on Land Rovers which allow you to see underneath the vehicle so as I drive forward watch this it's going to fill that in yeah and then I can see what's underneath the vehicle Ooh. 
The car's digital voice assistant is really good. It understands lots of things. Check this out. Hello, Aura. What the? Lower rear left window. Okay. Now it's been programmed to understand lots of different accents, so I'm going to do a really strong Midlands accent, which is where I'm from, so let's try it. Hello, Aura. I'm listening. Close rear left window. Closing back left area. It's not surprising it understands that strong Midland accent because the people that import this car are actually based in the Midlands. Let's try something else and something a little bit trickier still. Hello, Aura. Yes, I'm here. Open rear left window, halfway. All right, opening halfway. That was Scottish, by the way. Now let's try some other accents, so French. Hello, Aura. What the? Close rear left window. Oh. French. And finally, my favourite. Hello, the aura. What the? La, the rear left window half away. Okay, it's done. Hmm, yeah, that is very good. The Funky Cat comes with loads of kit as standard. For instance, you get automatic cruise control with lane keeping assist and radar detection to keep you safe distance from the car in front. There's all sorts of other safety systems as well to stop you crashing into stuff, including a system that stops you opening your door into oncoming traffic, cyclists or joggers, as I'll demonstrate now with this jogger here. Go on then, jogger, jog towards me. Oh, look, there's the warning. Ah, save the day. The AuraCat comes with a 48 kilowatt hour battery pack, which you can charge using DC current at up to 64 kilowatts or AC up to 11 kilowatts. The range is 193 miles. Now that's a bit more than a Honda E and Mini Electric, and it's a bit less than something like a Volkswagen ID3 and a Peugeot E208. In fact, if you want to compare claim mileages, here's a boring table for you to look at. Just pause the video. Boring, but useful. Anyway, the AuraCat has a single electric motor that drives the front wheel, <laughs> it's driving me crazy, and it puts out 171 horsepowers. We'll find out how quick that is in a bit when I launch the car. Now, if you're thinking about buying an Aura Funky Cat or another car for that matter, you probably need to sell your current car and you can do that through CarWow. Right, just click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link in the description below. And all you have to do is upload some photos, give a brief description, highlight any damage, and our dealers will then bid on your car. It's super easy and it's completely free. If you want to do that, at a later date, just simply Google help me car wow and we will help you sell your car. I can do it now. Okay, let's see what the Aura Funky Cat is like to drive, starting off with in town. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to put it into single pedal driving mode. There we go. There's three modes of regen, but they all creep. But if you go to single pedal, it's just one function. And then when you lift off the accelerator, the car will slow itself down, but also come to a complete stop. Look, I'm not even touching the brakes. So you can just drive around town using the accelerator, so long as you're careful and you don't need to do an emergency brake. In terms of the visibility, forward visibility is really good because you've got a low dash and quite a low bonnet. The side mirrors, they're big as well. The view at the back though isn't great. It's quite a narrow... Right, something weird's happened. I've come to a stop and it seems to put the parking brake on automatically and now it's released it. That was a bit embarrassing. Well, the turning circle be embarrassing. Let's find out. I've got to do a U-turn here with a load of traffic about the place. This could be chaos. It's 11.2 metres. By comparison, a Volkswagen ID3 has a turning circle of 10.2 metres, but it should be enough to get round here. Should it? Should it? Should it? Good that you got the cameras to help you out. Camera, I don't, I want a different view. Why is it showing that angle? That's the angle I want there, look, that was helpful. Just need to look in the right place, Watson. Anyway, look, it made it round. It wasn't quite as easy as in the ID3, but it was doable. Part of the reason it hasn't got such a tight turning circle as a Volkswagen is because this is front wheel drive and because of the drive shafts going to the front wheels, it means you can't turn the wheels quite as much as you can the rear drive VW. All right, let's let this pass out. Go on, after you. That's fine. Makes you a friendly driver, the Funky Cat, because you're quite relaxed and happy in its beautiful cabin. What's not so beautiful though is the braking. So I'm just gonna go off one pedal driving and just go into normal. So let's turn it off, go on off. There we go. The problem for me is that the brakes just seem a little bit inconsistent. So the amount that you press the pedal doesn't seem to correlate to the amount of the car stops. It just doesn't seem very linear or natural. 
so you can find it a bit jerky. Best to just stick with the one pedal mode in town. I'm not going to complain about the suspension when you're going slowly though, it seems to deal with bumps really well. And the steering, it is very nice and light which is good for those manoeuvres. Now let's see what the Funky Cat is like on fast roads. So let's say you've got to join a motorway, you're going from around 40 miles an hour to 70. Let's punch it. Pickup's pretty strong and that is 70. Well I went to 69 because I want to stay under the limit. So that was pretty good. What's not so good though, is when you're traveling at speed on the motorway, can you hear this? There's a lot of wind noise, quite a lot. Another thing I've noticed is that as you go faster, the suspension isn't quite so good as it is when you're going slower. And if you hit a sudden bump, you get a bit of a jolt. It doesn't feel quite as planted as I'd like. Also, there's the range. See, I've driven this car mainly on the motorway and I've averaged 35.9 kilowatt hours per 100 miles, which means that on a full battery, the full 48 kilowatt hours, you're gonna be doing 133 miles. The range will get better if you do a mixture of driving, such as in town and stuff like that. But that's what you'll get if you're just cruising on the motorway, so be warned. Finally then, it's time to try out the cat on a twisty country road. So I'm gonna go into sports mode, which, well, oh, it's rubbish that you have to do that. I'm gonna put regen into light. It's the most natural feeling. Let's see what it's like. Check it at some corners. First thing I'm noticing is accelerating out the bends. You can feel the front tires just struggling for traction and the stability control just kicking in and raining back the power. Then there's the steering. It feels artificial, it's numb. Now it wouldn't normally matter, but it's a bit like, you know, when you go to the dentist and you have an injection in your face and it numbs it all up. And while your mouth works perfectly fine, you just can't trust that it's not dribbling. And it's a bit like that with the steering because took the car to bend, it grips really well and goes round. So that's great but you just don't have the confidence to chuck it into bends because of that dribbliness. No, so it's just because of that numbness. That's a real shame, that is. And when you compare this to a MG4, which is rear wheel drive and it's got brilliant steering, it's just nowhere near as much fun. Look, see, it goes around, no problem. It doesn't lean much at all. I just don't want to push it because I don't know exactly what the front wheels are doing because of all the dental injection stuff in the steering. There's not dental injection stuff in the steering. However, overall, I think the Aura Cat drives pretty well. It's more than adequate. The Aura Funky Cat is supposed to do 0 to 60 in 8.3 seconds, but the specialist timing gear will reveal the truth. I'm gonna do it. That was a bit of a delay, putting my foot down, but acceleration seems pretty decent. Here we go, 7.27 seconds. They did lie, but in a good way. So then what's my final verdict on the Aura Funky Cat? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should consider the Aura Funky Cat. It's a pretty decent electric car. It's just a shame it hasn't got a bigger boot. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this channel by hitting that box there, that little CarWow logo. And then if you want to watch some more videos, click on those windows there. See you next time.